I said, this movie was BLM's dream, right? Th those three, those three characters you talked about that were on the cliff watching, that that's Patrice Cullors, Alicia Garza, and Opal Tometi. The only difference is they would have been on the boats with the white people leaving because they prefer to live around white people than they do with black folk. Delano, I, I think one of the, in talking to you this morning, one of the great things you pointed out to me that I missed, and it's because literally when I saw the movie coming to a conclusion, I <laughs> first scooted up to the edge of my seat and I was like, okay, this is almost over. My pain is almost done. And then as I was like, okay, it's clear, there's maybe another 50 seconds, 60 seconds left. I stood up, walked down the steps, started exiting the theater, and then I turned around just so I could see the full thing. And so the last thing I see are uh, General N Naniska, uh, Nawi, the young girl, mm -hmm. and then I think it's the tall warrior, Amenza, I think is her name, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I see those three standing and looking over all that they've conquered. And then the next thing you know, the woman king pops up. And I'm like, it's over. I can leave. I can escape. <laughs> and so I, I left immediately. Didn't look back. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to see the credits. I didn't want to know who was fully responsible for this mess. But I think I left too soon because you pointed out to me. And please, because I, I can only take your word for it or I didn't yeah. see it for myself. But there's a scene where basically... They, after the, some of the credits roll, they shout out Breonna Taylor. Yeah, that's right, Jason. I, I stayed because I'm a glutton for punishment, and I was already there. So I said, <laughs> you know, let me let me stay through the credits, and uh, I, because I know the credits are oftentimes you you may tease you know a sequel or or some part of the plot may be revealed, and as you said, the the, the tallest of the warriors, she was there. You know, there was a bunch of swords Amenza. on the ground. Amenza, excuse me. She, she was there. There were swords on the ground. Um, she was calling out some of the names of her fallen uh, compatriots, right? So it was, it was a scene similar to some of the ones that were earlier in the movie because they were clearly praying to their ancestors. And she called out the, the one lady. I can't remember. I'm not good with names, but she was like the drill sergeant um, warrior who got killed in battle. And there was another name and another name. And then at the end, there was a dramatic pause. And then she said, Brianna. And then, and then it cut. And I said, yep, I, I was right. This is, this is all propaganda. I mean, this, this is meant to demoralize, intimidate, um, and emasculate. This is peak DEI movie making from Hollywood. Um, and, and it just goes to show that f for these people, it's not about really the story or be having any fidelity to the story. It's always about the underlying message that they wanna push. And that's why I said, this movie was BLM's dream. Right. Th those three those three characters you talked about that were on the cliff watching that that's Patrice Cullors, Alicia Garza and Opal Tometi. The only difference is they would have been on the boats with the white people leaving because they prefer to live around white people than they do with black folk. Right. But, but that's what this is, Jason. This is this is the BLM amification of of the Dahomey story and and the people who will cheer the loudest are the ones who are on Twitter all the time saying we need we need to teach real authentic history. But they don't mind, you know, propaganda when it when it suits them and it makes them feel, you know, like like they have some sort of accomplishment because they can link it back to their history. So th this was all propaganda from from the word go. All right. So I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on and sound like a conspiracy <laughs> theorist, but this is what I honestly believe. None of this stuff is an accident, Delano. And I'm talking oh, about yeah. Black Lives Matter, starting in 2014 or whatever year it started. This isn't an accident. This isn't three women that just came up with a hashtag and it just took off organically. Someone decided and that's why this stuff is all connected. And that's why there's shout outs and references in movies. And just like, again, I didn't even go there. But yes, the three black BLM leaders or whatever, that, that's what's being depicted. And that's why they do the shout out to Breonna Taylor, the, the woman killed in, in Louisville. And, and it just, this morning when we talked, the first thing you said was like, oh my God, this, this was a psyop. And, mm. and, and I'm arguing all of this stuff we're seeing, 
is a psyop. There's an organized agenda being executed to emasculate men, mm -hmm. American men, and we're just happen to be first up. Five, 